Hello, space rangers, fourth graders, and scientists. So today we are gonna talk about how does rain affect land? So we are starting out in our geology, geology unit and we are going to talk about different types of landforms. So land is outside. Outside has weather. Well, at least in Phoenix, it's very hot. So it does rain here though. And in some places it rains a lot more, some places it rains a lot less. But we are gonna talk about specific landforms in Arizona and how they work and how they look and how rain affects them and how that may change the way they look over time. So we're gonna do an experiment today with three different mounds of dirt um, to see how rain affects them and how they spread out, how much the soil absorbs the, the water and how much their height is affected. We're gonna talk about all that. But first, your scientific notebook needs to match mine. So start at the top with how does rain affect land? That is our scientific question of the day. Now, you are going to make a box to record your, starts with an O. We talked about it when we did energy. Good, our observations, things we are going to see with our eyes, things we are going to observe when we do our experiment. So I want you to make a box, make a line at the top, make a line right there. This is gonna say water, one. Make another line. This is gonna say water, two. Got it so far? We'll give you a second. Okay, now I'm gonna write small. I'm gonna write medium. And I'm gonna write large. There we go. Okay, so these are where we're going to observe, I'm sorry, these are where we're going to record our observations. So first, I need you to be scientists and think about how would rain affect land? Make a hypothesis. And hypothesis is just going to be your prediction. We are predicting the future. We are looking into the future and going, well, if it rains a lot, it gets really muddy. If it rains a little bit, it gets really slippery. If it rains a medium amount, maybe a recess is canceled. Think about it. How does rain affect land? I want to say that rain affects land by making it muddy and slippery. Ran out of room now, that's okay. Okay, so you make your predictions. How do you think water is going to affect land? Do you think it's gonna make it harder and denser? Do you think it's gonna make it really spread out? Do you think it's gonna make it muddy and slippery just like me? Your prediction does not have to match my prediction, guys, but your observation chart does have to match mine. What you put in it in these six boxes doesn't matter, but make sure you have water one, water two, small, medium, large, because when we go outside and we start to play with dirt, then it's going to be important on how you record and where you record in each of these boxes. So what we're gonna do for our um, what we're gonna do for our experiments is go outside, play with some dirt, simulate some rain, and see. We're going to observe rain affects land. Let's go see if your prediction is right. <sighs> Hello, space rangers. Okay, so now we are gonna do an experiment today. We're gonna talk about how rain affects land and make sure that you're gonna record your observations just like the paper we talked about. So we're gonna fill this cup with one fourth of a cup of dirt, this cup with a half a cup of dirt, and this cup with a full cup of dirt. Make sure that it's packed dirt, so don't just pour it in there. I mean, you gotta make sure you press it down. And then you're going to need 100 milliliters of water, and I will be measuring it in my graduating cylinder. You're gonna need two batches of 100 milliliter water. So let's get started. we have our dirt set up, just a reminder, this is one cup, this is a half a cup, and this is a fourth of a cup of dirt. So make sure that they're all packed down in there. And you're going to carefully, small mound of dirt, separate that a little bit, okay? Pack 
that in there. Make sure it's packed. Move them apart a little bit. Water. Okay. And medium mound of dirt. <laughs> Okay, so as you can very clearly see, we have small, medium, and large mounds of dirt. Our, our, our question of the day is how does rain affect land? So think of these as different types of land. So you have a little bit of land, a medium-sized bit of land, and a big mound of land. So let's measure out 100 milliliters of water, slowly and carefully. Okay, that's about 100 milliliters of water. Now I'm going to pour it into my watering can. This is going to be on your paper. This is going to be our first amount of water. So you're going to record the first amount of water on the small, first amount on the medium, and the first amount on the large. So let me pour the 100 milliliters of water into a rain simulator. And now this is going to be a small amount of rain. I want you to pay attention to how much, I'll move you down a little bit. There we go. Uh, I want you to pay attention to how much soil is washed away. So you ready? We, mm, forgot. Main thing, you need to have the same amount of rain on each of them. I can't have a downpour over here and just a sprinkle over here, it won't do the same. So I'm gonna count one, two, three for each of them. Then we are going to uh, conduct it one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Ooh, okay, ready? One, whoop. one, two, three. Okay. So let's get a little closer look here. A little bit washed away. It got a little matted, probably like none over there got washed away, but a lot did there. So I need you to record that. Under the first observation of the, uh, sorry, the small, middle, and large observations for the first rain attempt. Now I'm going to get 100 more milliliters of water, slowly and carefully. Perfect. I'm gonna pour it into my rain simulator. Okay, and we are gonna do one more attempt. So now on your on your notes, this is going to be second watering of the first mound, the second mound, and the third mound. So we'll we'll look at what how it affects each different mound differently. So are we ready? Let's get a little closer here. Ready? Remember, same amount of rain on each pile. And one, two, three. Oh my goodness. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Okay, last one. One, two, three. So already, before I go back into my lab, I can see that more rain affected it a lot more. Let's get you closer here. This one is basically gone. This little mound, basically gone. This little mound's still kind of here, but it did spread the soil out really far. And then this one lost a lot of height, but it, it did soak up a lot of the water. There are bigger puddles around these two than there are around this one. So keep that in mind, how the soil would soak up the water. Let's head back into the lab where it's not 115 degrees. <sighs> Much cooler in here. Okay, so how does rain affect land? We poured water over three different types of dirt. We, we poured it over one fourth of a cup of dirt, one half of a cup of dirt and one whole cup of dirt. So our one half is gonna, or our, excuse me, our one quarter is gonna be our small cup. When we poured the first water on it, what did you write down? What did you observe? I observed that the soil got really small. It squished down together and it got really damp. So I'm gonna say, let's see, what did I write down here? Most of it, most of the soil washed away. Now, I want you to go to the medium one. What happened when we poured water over the medium mound of dirt? I'm gonna give you a chance to write it down. I'm gonna write something, keep writing. Okay, what I wrote here, it's a little hard to see, so. And the medium one on water one, I said some of the soil washed away. We watched it compact a little bit. It did spread, some of the soil did leave, but not nearly as much as the small one for water one. What happened for the large one? Write it down. 
Hmm. Okay, for the large one, I really observed with the first uh, rain that it held. It wasn't a lot of water, so it did absorb most of it. Not a lot of the water, or not a lot of the dirt went away. So the large round held most of the water. If your predictions match mine, that's great. They'll, they don't have to be the exact same sentences. Don't worry about that. Now, water two. So we refilled and got 100 milliliters more of water. And what happened to the small one? Okay, that's what I thought too. All of the soil washed away. Awesome. So all of the soil washed away. It basically was a puddle after that. None of it absorbed. It was all just a puddle of mud, okay? Now the medium one, what happened when we rained on it again? Right, it looked a lot like the first rain on the first pile. So now we put more water on it. So it's become a little smaller, which means that most of the soil, most of the, so, the soil washed away. Awesome. Now the large one. I was very surprised in how our large one actually reacted to more rain because it already was filled with water right from the first test. We didn't get new dirt. It was the same water from the second test or from the first test to the second test. Write down, what do you think happened? What did you see happen when I poured the water over the dirt? Okay, I wrote down that some soil washed away. So some of it washed away because it already was filled with water from the first test. The first test, it soaked up most of the water, but that does make it weaker. It means that it can't soak up anymore, so it's all just kind of wash away. So I said some of the soil washed away. This observation chart is now filled out with what we learned in our experiment. Now, I need to go back to my uh, prediction. I tried to predict the future, and I said, rain affects land by making it muddy and slippery. And then I conducted this experiment. You know what? I want to say that rain does affect land by making it very muddy, but I think slippery is depends on the surface that it's on. We were using dirt. So I was about half right and half wrong, and that's okay. Your hypothesis does not have to be perfect. That is a big part of science. You do not have to be perfect in your prediction. So I am going to conclude. I am going to think about what I did, and I am going to fix this and make a sentence that is correct because I proved it in my experiment. I want you to write down your conclusion on the bottom underneath your observation chart. This all needs to look the exact same as mine, guys. So I'm gonna say, okay, there we go. Okay, so I wrote down at the bottom, rain makes land money and sometimes it will be slippery because we were working with dirt, it's not gonna be as big. But if I was working with cement or wood, it probably would make it slippery. So I needed to be more specific and that's okay. What do you think we learned here? What would you do if I was trying to build a house? Would you build it on a small amount of dirt? No, because if it rained, that house would just wash away, right? Would you build it on a medium type of dirt, medium amount of dirt? No, right? Because it would be okay probably on the first rain, but then say it rains later in the week, it would be washed away. You want to build a structure or a house, anything, on a largest mound of dirt that you can and very compact because water is just going to soak into that soil and it will hold and hold and hold. It might have a little wiggle to it, but overall, the larger the mound of dirt, the better it's going to hold rainwater. So rain, how does rain affect land? It makes it muddy, it makes it loose, it fills it up with water. So it is going to compromise how strong the land is. Whew, all right. So that was going, that is how can rain affect land. That is our experiment for the day. We are going to continue with geology later in the week, but that is our experiment. Go do your homework.